Hello brothers and sisters. I wanted to make another video because earlier I was talking to you about the pedagogue and I also wrote down here for people so you kind of know a word we have that's similar to pedagogue or pedagogy is a pedophile, someone who is overly interested in children. Now this concept that Julius Caesar came up with and it even goes back further in history than him, of divide and conquer, is exactly what they do to our families, see? Because they, they try to teach us that you need this government compulsory schooling. And if you type in John Taylor Gatto and go to YouTube, you'll find um, that's where I got that phrase from compulsory government schooling because they make you go even the Amish or even homeschool they make you do it according to a state agenda so this concept of divide and conquer has come into families and in communities and we see that in the way that networking has come to replace real intimate relationships and so mothers and fathers are the teachers in scriptures. That I mean that's been the mothers the mother and father has been the teachers forever. <laughs> so in in one of my books I read the whole article on pedagogy and we know from the old meaning it has to do with a slave who would watch over the children to ensure their physical and moral welfare. They would choose a wise slave to watch over their children. They would also take them to the schools. And that's what it's speaking of when it uses the term schoolmaster in Galatians chapter 3, I believe it was. And hopefully we'll get to more on that later, not in this video because I'm explaining a different concept here, and that's the, the idea of taking your children away. Divide and conquer. Send mom and dad to work. Make it to where they both have to go to work because life is unbearable because you don't have any money, you know? And, and that's how we got into this concept of understanding the modern day school system from the evolutionary perspective of people who have a lot of money saying that they're evolved and that's why they have the right to superimpose their authority and their agendas and prerogatives upon you to make you have to go to work and, and your mom and dad both have to go to work and the child has to go to the adoption agency that they call school where they can begin to integrate them based, in, based on this bell curve grading system to say whether or not they are fit, whether or not they are evolving or on the higher end of evolution or the lower end of evolution, but it's, it's within the, this concept that the people who already hold big positions within these communities, their children are getting better treatment there than the, the poorer children. An interesting thing that I learned from watching some of John Gatto's videos that I never knew, and from watching some other videos, is that the Columbine shooters were actually well-to-do children. They were not poor kids. These were children who were from upper middle class families who had money and came from families with a lot of money and that suicide is actually more geared towards people who do have money and I never really knew that fact it's a hidden fact because it shows you that the system is completely messed up so what we're looking at here is we're looking at how integrated everything is. We're looking at how an integrated means just like the coming together of everything or the syncretism of everything. I find this strange duality at work in my life that the more that I learn about 
the good, which is kind of like the idea of science, the, the broader that the nations gets, like the more that I learn, the more I realize that I don't know. And strangely, and I, I, I recognize that the scripture speaks of double-mindedness, and it says that a double-minded man is, un, un, is unstable in all of his ways. So when, when the scripture says we have to exercise our, our, and practice doing good so we can learn to recognize good and evil, and, and that's in Hebrews, I can't remember exactly how it words it, but I find that this duality works in my life, that the more that I learn about the, the things that God is telling me to do through Scripture, the more I recognize the evils. Now, they call that penetrating, or I'm going to call that penetrating the bureaucracy. I'm amazed at how much wisdom they put in kids' cartoons. It might not be overall, but little spurts of wisdom that they put there. Kind of like I've spoken about about the royal we, and I saw that in the movie Wreck It Ralph, and it was talking about the royal we, something I'd been researching. I was amazed. And a and another one that I saw was in Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs too, and he's describing the kind of person he needs that he can manipulate and take advantage of, and it just blew my mind the description that it gave. I had to write it down. And I wrote down that description and I shared it in one a video that I named Cartoon Wisdom, if you want to look that up. And a, a video that I just watched recently was The Incredibles, and it actually talked about the penetrating the bureaucracy. And I was like, wow. And that's what they do, right? They use all this paperwork and they drown us in these ideas, these false ideas and these false notions that destroy our rational capability, our emotional capability. And that's the sacrament. That's the ritual. That's the secular ritual. And even the non-secular rituals that come out of religion that they, they try to manipulate us and get us believing in these, these things that we can't see, right? Kind of like Colossians 2. And they, they, they're trying to manipulate us with these, these abstract falsities and these misrepresentations of reality. And once we begin to see past that, we're kind of penetrating the bureaucracy. And 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 what he says in that movie, Incredibles, he says he says they're penetrating the bureaucracy. And and the shareholders are having to give out too much money. Like what about them? What about the shareholders? So he's like taking taking their side because he's the baron. B-A-R-O-N, Baron, and that's the lowest class of the people on the authority scale. They did the same thing with the word clergy when they turned the meaning into rank, is that this idea of clergy, they put the pastors on the bottom because the bishops and people like that were the shareholders. So as we begin to penetrate the bureaucracy, we begin to see through what's happening with these false abstract principles that they're using to kind of blanket over. It's almost like a mirror that they're trying to do of these like eternal principles that the scripture speaks of. They try to create these misrepresentations that um, that parallel and they're, they're like syllogisms that are kind of expressing the, the same things but they're they're twisting it and and it's messing up our minds and you if and to to borrow a phrase from John Gatto it's kind of like saying birds fly once you recognize it because it's so simple to to see once you know it's there that they are strangling us with the idea that certain people are unevolved and others are evolved and this is permeating our society, and it's been there since the garden in Genesis chapter 3. And that's the kind of the way they use civilization against savage, these aristocrats against these savage men who roam the land. Well, those same principles apply to wage slaves and to immigrants, and they call it wage laborers, but the slaves. We're slaves. So... When, when you begin to penetrate the bureaucracy, even in an active literacy way, or, or preaching and telling the truth, 
That's why you don't find people telling the truth because that hurts business and they have everyone fighting for money. They've divided and conquered our families. They've divided and conquered our, our concepts of marriage, longevity, and um, in a relationship and treating things with a sense of sanctity as though like as though like sexual contact is as a holy thing they don't treat sexual things like that in the media they treat it as an unholy fun pleasure that that's never meant to have any kind of real sentiment sentiment isn't the right word but real dignity in a marriage a dignity in a family and dignity in a relationship a, a god because god created everything in genesis chapter 1 to treat this world to treat animals to treat creatures and, and to have a sense of dignity for ourselves that that interlocks with the ideas that were expressed in Genesis chapter 1 and 2 for the purposes that God created us. And, and only through God's will can we even get back to that by being born again and being renewed daily in our minds. Because they want us to believe that we're nothing. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers of the darkness in high places. They build their buildings in high places, their castles, their churches, their hospitals, I mean, look on the hills, the Acropolis. They build their cities, their buildings on these high places. So we just see how the government and business, they can't have too many chiefs. That's another reason why they dumb us down. They, make, they try to make us stupid. They have to concentrate the power and wealth because if they didn't, then we would, they would have to divvy out some of that wealth. The family, community, and nation... They must destroy the family unit. They, um, Psalm chapter 2, right? It says that the, they take counsel against Yahweh and His anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder. The book, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed, he explains this divide and conquer concept too. Is you can't have people unifying. That's why they destroyed the labor movements in the United States who were looking for fair wages, fair treatment, ergonomics, which is good treatment in the office space so you don't injure your body. And they train us to want the approval of authority, the meritocracy, the degrees, and the flattering titles, and to, and, to want some, and to want authorities to clap for us. And we raise our hands and we say, oh, oh, choose me, choose me. And they say, choose me. And you're like, ah, yes, they chose me. Oh, thank you, God. I love you, manager. That's how people act at the Christmas parties, the Easter parties, right? And the synagogue, I put that up here because you see pedagogue and synagogue. Pedagogue actually means to conduct the children or to lead a child. And this means to lead together or to conduct together. So we can see how there's actually good, there's always a good way of using some of the same words often but they're just they're they're always presented in either a good or bad way because of the way we use language kind of like the word heresy it sounds bad or cult sounds bad but if you actually look up the definitions of those meanings oftentimes they they were used in positive meanings it's because of the demonization of denominationalism our dominionism that these things have been turned bad because they want to they want to dominate you so if you don't go with the Baptist church oh you're in a cult if you don't go with the church of Christ you're in a cult um, oh you're a, you're a heretic or a schism maker and you say you look at them and you say what you're all of those things what are you talking about I follow God <laughs> I follow him oh you're in a cult no I'm just not coming down there giving you my money, which is your aim, is that you're trying to get in my pocketbook. That's the reason for the little trays. Oh, you're paying God. Paying God? So the money somehow becomes spiritual and goes in God's pocket? That's blasphemy. That's an outright lie. It's not true. So we've looked at these things, and I shared with you earlier, they treat us like livestock. 
in stables with that the way that they make us stay in these houses and don't let us move or we can move to a new one but they need to track us and we got to register they got to know where we're at at all times right we can't just live on the land and coexist with nature like in Genesis 1 and 2 right and and they they treat us like horses and when you take a horse from the herd and you try to reintroduce it, it makes the horse retarded because it doesn't know how to function anymore in a community when you re-release it with the herd. It's been locked up in a stable. It just it doesn't know how to run and interact with other horses. That's how they treat us in school. Darwin and evolution grade us instead of physical force. So rather than using physical force, now they just use the, this school system thing they invented with grades and that all of those little games that they play, the mental gymnastics they put you through at school and the humiliation and the subjugation and making you ask to go and pee, right? I gotta go poop. No, sit there, right? Th to give a hall pass to the chosen children. Yes, you may go pee because you belong to a rich person. No, you're a bad kid. You sit there and shut up and poop or pee yourself, right? So. I hope that this helps and I uh, um, just wanted to share some more of these concepts with you and I'm going to name this video Penetrating the Bureaucracy because that's what happens as you begin to see through these little abstract and, some, and concrete too ways that they kind of hold you down and control you and bureau comes from wood and the, you can get the idea of a soapbox or a pulpit and the way that they use those little front men to kind of guard the bureaucracy so you don't see the people operating behind the scene who are going to gain the inheritance and gain the money who are written in the wills and the contracts, right? So I hope that this helps and thank you for taking the time to watch. See you in the next video.